Labas, my name is Mangardas and let me tell you a secret. Real-time updates, feature flagging and A-B testing. What if I told you that you could enable these powerful features in your Flutter applications with minimal development effort and without any costs? Like peanut butter to our jelly, like print statements to our debugging problems. Flutter has its... it has... Well, since you are watching this video, I have already spoiled it in the title and you know that we are going to talk about Firebase Remote Config. Anyway, if you are not familiar with Firebase Remote Config, it's a cloud-based service that lets you change the behavior and appearance of your app without requiring an app update. This means that you can make changes to your app in real time and users will see the updates immediately. But why, when and how to use the Firebase Remote Config in your Flutter apps? Let me show you the demo. What you see in front of you is a Flutter Forward Agenda app. With this app, you can view the general information and see the event schedule. Notice that the information is currently read from the JSON file stored in local assets. The live stream feature notifies the user when the event goes live and provides a link to join the stream. Also, there are two different available options to add a session to the list of favorites. We will get back to this a little bit later. Lastly, we can notify the users when the new app version is out and set whether the update is mandatory or not. Overall, the app works great. However, we could have some problems along the way. First of all, data is stored locally. Uh, this is great. We don't need an internet connection, right? Right? Well, we have some to be announced items and the event timeline could be adjusted as well. Meaning, once we update the event schedule, we would need to release a new app version just to update the data. Features like app update or live stream notification cannot even exist without triggering them remotely. At this point, how can we even test the usage of our add to favorites feature? That's where Firebase Remote Config enters the room. Let's start with creating a new Firebase project and adding it to the Flutter app. Go to the Firebase console, select Add Project and come up with a not-so-creative project name. Do not forget to enable Google Analytics for the project since we will use this for A-B testing a little bit later. Then choose a Google Analytics account and select Create Project. After a minute or two, your project now must be ready to be used in your Flutter app. In this project, we are going to use Firebase Core, Firebase Analytics, and Firebase Remote Config packages, so add them to the project dependencies. The easiest way to connect Firebase with our Flutter application is by using the Flutter Fire CLI. The Flutter Fire Configure command initializes the Firebase project for the selected platforms. Since we haven't initialized any Android or iOS apps yet, these are created for us automatically. Finally, we initialize Firebase on application startup. The first improvement that we'll make for the Flutter Forward Agenda app is extracting local event data to the Firebase remote config so it could be updated on the fly. From the Firebase console, create the first Firebase remote config property called event info, which is of type JSON. Then, Copy the event data from the local assets file in the Flutter app and paste it into the JSON editor view. Do not forget to save the changes and publish your Firebase remote config properties for the first time. Now we can safely remove assets from the project and start implementing the Firebase remote config service. This service is a wrapper around the Firebase remote config dependency and it will be used by all the following services that need access to the configuration properties. First, add some boilerplate code for Riverpod to make the service accessible across the app. Then, start implementing the initialization code by creating a try-catch block to handle some Firebase oopsies if there will be any. To initialize the remote config properly, we need to ensure that the last activated config is available to getters, set the configuration settings, and choose the appropriate loading strategy. Head to the Firebase documentation to learn more about different Firebase remote config loading strategies and which one should be used for your specific use case. Do not forget to initialize the Firebase remote config service inside your project's main method. Lastly, 
we need to update the event data source inside the event repository. Instead of loading JSON data from local assets, we use the value from the Firebase remote config. Now, if we update the event information at any moment in the future, we can be sure that the users will see the most recent information in front of them. And of course, changing event information won't require releasing a new app version anymore. Let's implement the application update feature next. The thing with mobile application updates is that sometimes we want them to be mandatory and sometimes we want to release an app update only to a particular platform. But how to achieve that? To differentiate Firebase remote config values based on platform, location, user group, and other criteria, we use conditions. In our case, we create a dedicated condition for the Android platform. Then we create a Firebase remote config property for the app version JSON object that contains the application version, build number, and the Boolean flag whether the update is mandatory or not. To differentiate the value for iOS and Android, we use the previously created condition. Save, publish the changes, and we are good to go. Again, we add a method to the Firebase remote config service to retrieve the app version JSON property and later use it inside the app update service. On the screen, you could see two simulators. iOS one is on the left, and the right one runs on Android. By creating and using a separate condition for the Android platform, now we can handle app update behavior for each corresponding platform. This is only a single example of how conditions could be applied to Firebase remote config values. Let's see how we can use time-sensitive conditions to implement the live stream notification feature. To define when the event is live, we need to create a time-sensitive condition. Simply, Select a specific date and time range when you want the condition to work. In our case, that's the Flutter forward event date. Then define a Boolean property that uses the defined condition. The property will return true only during the event, meaning when the current date and time are within the range specified in our condition. Also, add another property for the stream link so that we could update it anytime if needed. I would also recommend to group related properties together for easier Firebase remote config properties management. For the third time, we extend the Firebase remote config service with new methods to retrieve the data and then use those methods in the corresponding service. This time, it's live stream service. I hope you notice how we use the same pattern again and again. Add a new property, extend the Firebase remote config service with new getters and use them wherever they are needed. This way, we can keep the codes consistent and predictable. I hope that boring code will become a new trend in 2023. To test out whether the event live notification is working, we need to wait for the event. Well, do we? Sad. At least we can change the event start date, right? It should work. Indeed, the live stream notification pops up on the screen and we could access the event stream link straight away. Okay, that's cool. But how about that add a session to the favorites feature I showed you previously? A feature toggle or a feature flag is a remote switch that could enable or disable a particular feature in the application. This is extremely useful when you are going to launch a new app functionality and you want to do it in stages, or you notice an unexpected app behavior and you can disable a feature just like that. Let's say we want to validate whether our add event session to favorites feature will be used at all. First of all, we create a condition that will be applied only to 10% of our user base. Now, add a feature toggle that will enable the add to favorites functionality in the app and use the previously created condition. Extend the Firebase remote config service with an additional method. Inside the favorite service, add the Firebase remote config service dependency 
add a new analytics event to track whether the user has used the add to favorites feature and use the feature flag value from the Firebase remote config. When we check the application behavior, we could notice that the add to favorites feature is enabled only on a particular set of devices since the 10% of user's condition is applied. If we are confident enough about the new functionality, we could turn the feature toggle on globally by removing the condition and setting the feature flags value to true. This is great. We can enable and disable features globally, or we can do stage rollouts by enabling the feature for let's say 10% of users and gradually increasing this value. The question is, can we take this concept a step further? When you think about it, A-B testing is very similar to feature toggling. Just in addition to changing the values of a particular toggle, you also measure how a specific value affects the user's behavior. Then you could see which value performs the best so you could be more confident when introducing new features to your app. In our case, we noticed that the Add to Favorites button is not performing well, and we assumed that the slidable button is just too hidden for the users to even notice that this button exists. What we can do is create a button type property in Firebase Remote Config and use it inside the app. This way, we will be able to switch the button type remotely, and even better, now we can create an A-B test for it. From the dashboard, select Create your first A-B test, come up with one more creative name for the experiment, and select the target group for it. Our goal is to increase the Add to Favorites button conversion, so we select the corresponding event we created previously. Finally, select the Firebase Remote Config property for the experiment, and define the different values that you want to test. In our case, these are different button types, slidable and card buttons. Leave the variant weights equal so that it would be a fair fight between different button types. Start the experiment and now patiently wait for the results. To validate the A-B test, let's run the app on different iOS devices. Notice that one device still uses the slidable button while the other provides the button on top of the event session card. So, which button type performs better? One eternity later. Let's check the results of an A-B test. The card button type won by outperforming the slidable button by 60%. If we are confident enough about these results, we can roll out the changes so that the best performing variant will be available to all users. After that, do not forget to stop the experiment so it would not affect the button type values anymore. Let's recap what we learned in this video. You can use Firebase Remote Config to provide different values to your app and later change them on the fly. Use conditions to provide different configuration values for your users based on specific criteria. Use Firebase Remote Config for feature flagging and gradual rollouts of new features. And do not forget to use A-B tests to validate your assumptions and provide the best possible experience for your users. Thanks for watching. Save trees, stay solid, see you around.